So today we're going to do transformations of sinusoidal functions. In particular, we're going to be looking at the graphs of sine theta and cos theta. And we're going to do all the transformations that you learned about in chapter one. A few little tricks that you'll need to know that's a little bit different because we're working with, with a, a sinusoidal function, but we'll get to those as we move along. So here's our lovely formula f at x equals a sine k x minus d plus c. Those letters should all be familiar to you, except maybe the k. You might not know what that's going to do to a sinusoidal function because, as you recall, that affects the horizontal. It's a horizontal change. So we'll get to that one in a minute. We're going to start with the basic ones, though, first. I've got them all color-coded here. We're going to go through them, and then at the end of this lesson, there will be a link to... Um, uh, a handout that I'm going to get you to try on your own and then I will do a video giving the solutions for it so it's kind of like a little a little practice quiz for you okay so sine theta first of all you all know what sine theta looks like anytime you go to do the graph you want to divide your graph into four equal parts remember that kind of represents first second third and fourth quadrants as you go around the circle right so sine graph starts and ends at zero. So I always like to do it like this. I mean, if you don't have graph paper, just make a line, divide it in half, write your 180, divide that in half, and divide this one in half. There you go. So it starts at zero. Um, we'll put a scale here. We're going to make this a one here and minus one. And by now you know that a sine function has um, uh, a range between plus and minus one. So at 90, we're at 1. At 180, we're at 0. At 270, we're at negative 1. And at 360, we're back to 0. So do your best to make a nice curve between these points. I mean, I'm no artist, but if with a little bit of practice, you can make a pretty nice graph. Okay, so there's my y equals sine x or sine theta. Um, if you take a look at the graph, nice curve, make sure you know the shape. Now, the other graph that I want to put on here for you is the sine, the negative sine theta graph. And in this case, it's really important that you know the positive and negative graphs, what they look like. So a negative sine theta means it's been reflected, right? It's a reflection about the x-axis reflection. Now we did those before when A was negative, it was a reflection and that's all that's happening here. So I do the same thing except I reflect it. So it's going to have the minimums will become maximum values and we go the same graph like this and we come back down. So there's your negative sine theta. So the positive one, the negative one. And when you do some more difficult um, identification of graphs or giving them equations, you want to look for the shape. So the sine, remember sine function starts on the axis and goes down, whereas the cosine function, as you probably recall, starts at one. So this time, I didn't put my scale on here. Okay, so we have the same deal here. I've got them in threes, so this is 90. I would go up 90, 1, 2, 3, 120, so I'm doing in increments of 30, sorry, 90, 180, 270, 360. Okay, so my cosine graph, remember, starts and ends at 1. So we'll put 1 right here, so it'll be 1. So it starts here, and it ends after 360 degrees, at the same place. So if you put those two dots on first and then find the lowest part, which is going to be in the middle, that's here, then the other two have to be zeros. And so your regular cosine function looks like this. It's not beautiful. Got lots of color for you today. Okay, now the other graph, um, y equals negative cos theta. So now we're going upside down. So I hope I have the right color here. I kind of mix them up. So reflection about the x-axis. So it's going to start at negative 1 this time. 
and it's going to end at negative 1. So remember, cos, if you do this all the time, starting and ending it at the same place. I've often had students draw graphs that, that don't have the right shape because they didn't start and end in the right place. So that means the middle point is going to be the highest. The other twos are going to be zeros. So you can see they're going to cross at the zeros. Now, the negative cosine function is used a lot in modeling Primarily because for a lot of spinning wheels, they start at the bottom. Remember when we did the sketches the other day, we started at the bottom. So a negative cos would be the easiest way to describe this function. So you need to know these four. Cold. Positive sign, negative sign. Positive cos, negative cos. Where to start it, where to end it. And again, as you can see, the cosine function is just the sine function shifted over 90 degrees. So now we're going to look at what happens when we change the a value. Now remember the a value, this number in front here, this letter in front. In this case, it's represented by a 2, minus 2. So that means I have a reflected sine function. So it looks like this orange graph here. It's reflected, but it also has um, an, a change in amplitude. So this 2 is changing the amplitude. So A, if it's greater than 1, is a vertical stretch. This isn't anything new to you, right? We did this before. So a vertical stretch by a factor of 2 here, and it's reflected. So I want to have a scale of plus and minus 2, because that's my new amplitude. So make this 2 and minus 2. It's a negative sign, so remember the sine function. You're not going to start it down here. That's where you would start a cosine function. Sine functions start on the axis. So the axis is right here, right? So I'm going to start here. It's going to have the same shape as the negative sine function. So that means it's going to go down back to the zero. Oops, I didn't put all my scale on here up to 2 and back down to 0. So it's going like this. Negative 2 sine theta. There you go. So all you have to do is change your scale here. Just put a 2 here instead of 1. Bang! You've got the, the right amplitude. Okay, so that's minus 2 sine theta. Minus 4 cosine theta. Okay, so we have an amplitude of 4 this time, so that means the graph has to go down as far as 4. So we'll just change our scale again here. We'll make this minus 4, and this is going to be plus 4 up here. It's a cosine function, a negative cos. So remember the regular cosine starts at the highest point, at 1. So now we're going to start at the negative part, so it's going to start lowest point first. In this case, it's stretched by a factor of 4, so that means it's going to start here. So if it starts here, and again, I didn't write my scale on, what was I thinking? 90, 180, 270, 360. Okay, I'm just going to write that on fast. It's those two. So I start at minus 4, I end at minus 4. The highest point is going to be here at 180, that's going to be plus 4, and the other two are the zeros. So here's my graph, just like that. Okay, so negative 4 cos theta. Now remember, my axis is right here always, unless there's a shift, which we're going to look at very next. Okay, so the next one, this is where we're using the C value. We're adding in a C. And I want to graph y equals, or f at x equals 2 sine theta plus 2. So sine theta plus 2, not 2 sine theta, sorry. Plus 2 means this is, the axis has been shifted up. And that's not my green. It must be this one. Axis shifted Remember we did this with your 1 over x functions. Axis shifted up 2 units. So
So that means that my axis is now going to be here. That's your equation of the axis. It's really easy to find right here, right here. Remember that was the equation of your axis for your 1 over x function, right? So here we go. This is um, 2. So I'm going to put 2 here. Now the, um, the, the amplitude of the sine theta is just 1. So that means it's going to go up as high as 3 and it's going to go down to 1. So this time I made my scale 1, 2, 3 instead of what I've done before. Um, we have the same period for the function. We're going to talk about that in a minute here. And so I'm going to make, this is 360, this is 180, 90, 1, 2, 3, 270. Okay, so it's sine theta, so it hasn't been reflected which means sine theta, again, remember, sine theta starts on the axis. Remember that. So I start here. At 90, it's going to have its highest point. That's 3. It's going to go back to 0. You have to go to a 0 every time. Like, don't go from here and flip it down or something silly. Um, here we go down to 1. And then we go back to 2. So we start and end on the axis. And here's my lovely little function like this. Okay, remember this is going to keep going, right? It's a continuous function. Axis shifted up two units. So y equals 2 or f at x equals 2 is the axis. The axis. Okay, so let's do another one. Let's try this one. Little trick here. Minus 2 cos theta minus 1. So the first thing you want to do is sketch on your axis. Make a little dotted line here. Okay, so you know that's where your zeros are going to cross. Now it's a negative cosine function. So if this is minus 1 here, I have to add and subtract 2 to get the maximum and minimum values. Don't think about this negative sign, okay? So we're just adding the amplitude. So I'm going to do plus 2, minus 2 right here. So I know where I'm starting from. So I go down 2 from minus 1, 1, 2. So I'm just going to do this little dotted line in pencil because that's going to show you that's as high as it can go, or sorry, as low as it's going to go. And I add 2 to minus 1. That gives me 1. That's going to be where the maximum values are on my graph. Always a good idea to put in these three little, like make this one more prominent because that's your axis. This is your maximum and your minimum. You won't go wrong with these. Okay, so minus cosine. So remember the negative cosine function starts at the lowest point of the graph. So it's minimum value. So that means I'm going to start here at the minimum value, right here, and I'm going to end up right here at the minimum value. So I'm going to just get these other, quickly sketch those in. I'm writing sideways, so it's a little, a little weird. Uh, one, two, three. Okay, so those are, this is where I, my lowest point, and then the next one has to be a zero. The next one has to be the highest point. The next one has to be a zero. And the next one is the lowest. So here's my graph. You'll get better at sketching these. It takes practice. Okay, so there's your minus 2 cos theta minus 1. Okay, so here's f of x equals minus 1. It's my axis. I've got the same amplitude. You might always want to check to make sure that your distances up and down are the same and you should get that right here by adding and subtracting that amplitude to the equation of the axis. Okay, so there's some beautiful graphs for you. I think so anyway, don't you? Now the hard part. Y equals sine k. I put an x here because your book uses x. I like to use f at theta because usually it's theta, but it doesn't matter. We'll follow the book for this one. Okay, so I have y equals sine 3x. So 3 is a k value, right? Right here. 3 is the k value. So that means that we have to 
adjust the period. And I've written out the equation for you right here. So remember when we did transformations, if this number was greater than 1, k is greater than 1, it was, do you remember, horizontal stretch of compression. Now remember, x's are weird. So you'd think it'd make it 3 times bigger, but it's not. This is um, horizontal, horizontal compression. So instead of the period being 360 degrees, it's going to be something less. Whereas if the k value is less than 1, in this case it's a half, that means a horizontal stretch. So your period is going to be greater than 360 degrees. I'm going to write that here because period greater than 360 degrees. And this is going to be period less than 360 degrees. So this is the only thing you have to adjust here. It's not hard. Follow along. So I've got a 3 here. So the period for this function is going to be period, I'm going to P equals 360 divided by 3 is 120 degrees. 120 degrees. That means one complete cycle in 120 degrees. So it's a regular sine function, which is going to start here, right on the axis. There's no vertical shift. It starts on the x-axis, and it's going to have one, two, three, let's put these on. Instead of this being 360 degrees, it's going to be 120 degrees. So all I have to do is change my scale to match. Remember, we divide it into quarters, right? 120 divided by 4 would be 30. So we're going by 30s. 30, 60, 90, 120. It has the same amplitude as a regular sine function. In this case, it's 1. So I just have to make sure my scale matches. And I'm just going to do the sine function, positive sine function. Remember, positive sine function, negative sine function, positive cos, negative cos. There we go. That was easy. Okay, let's do the cosine one. It has a half. So k is a half here. So that means I need to figure out the period. Period is going to be 360 degrees divided by one half. And I know you're going to say, ah, it's a fraction. That means 360 times 2 over 1, which is 720 degrees. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to go by, so 720, let's divide it by 3. Ooh, what's 720 divided by 3? Oh, sorry, 4. What am I saying? 720 divided by 4, uh, 180. Okay, so every... 3 is going to be 180 degrees. I should have been able to do that in my head, but it's very early this morning here for me. 1, 2, 3, 5, 40. 1, 2, 3, 7, 20. Okay, there we go. We're all set up. So, um, the amplitude is still 1. So I go 1 minus 1. It's a positive cosine function. Positive cos, we start at the highest point. So I start at the highest point, then I have to go to a zero, then I go to a lowest point, then I go to a zero, then I go to a highest point. Or like I said, you start and end, find the lowest and the zeros in between. And there we go. Like that. Cos one half x. What's important here is the period. Okay, so Normally, the cosine function, let's draw one in here just for comparison. Normally, the cosine function, I've got to divide these into halves, so it means like that, like that. Normally, a cos function would go like this, right? So you can see it's been stretched by a factor of two, horizontal stretch. Whereas this one, in 120 degrees, um, well, divided by 3, we wouldn't, the regular sine function would just have gone to here. 
do, 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 and it would be coming back down. It doesn't even fit on there. But this one does nicely show you how it's been stretched by a factor of two. What did I say three, four? Two times 360. Okay, so there's my, my horizontal stretches and compressions. The key equation here is this. You need to remember this one here, how to find the period. 360 divided by K. Okay, so finally, what we're going to do is the horizontal shifts left and right. So in this case, I have the function y equals, or f at x equals sine x minus 30. Now you remember horizontal shifts left and right by this, not k units, d units. We're shifting left and right d units. In this case, it says minus 30. It's a change to x. So what does that mean? X's are weird. It means it's going right 30 degrees. Now another way you can remember this is you can find your starting point by just setting this equal to zero. So I'm going to write that here. Starts at, and I do x minus 30 equals zero. So x equals 30 degrees. So I have to start my graph at 30 degrees. So um, let's say this is 30 degrees here. I'll call that 30. Let me get my pencil. So this is going to be 30 degrees, 30, 60, 90, 120, uh, 90, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So this is going to be 360 degrees. So if I'm starting my sine function at 30, it means everything shifts over 30 degrees. So it's not going to end at 360. It's going to end at 390 right? And the midpoint 180 is going to now be at 210. So all we're doing is adding 30 degrees to every every um, key point. So we're at 30, 60, 90, 120. So this is 120 degrees here. And so I have to shift everything by 30 degrees. Now we can sketch in the original function here. So we've gone like this, it would have been here, it would have been here, it would have been here, it would have been here. Okay, so here's the original sine function. But now every key point is going to be moved over 30 degrees. So from here to here, from here to here, and this one to here. It's not that hard, but look how beautiful it looks when you sketch it. There we go. Sine x minus 30. Remember, x's are weird. It doesn't say we're going to the left 30, we're going to the right 30. And this would continue, just shifting it along. And the last one, cos x minus d. So we're doing cos of x plus 60 degrees. Okay, so here's that lovely lime green pen. So for this one, I'm going to say, oh, x plus 60 equals 0. So x is minus 60 degrees. That's where I'm going to start. So I have to start at minus 60 here. Now, it's a cosine function. It has an amplitude of 1. So it goes from plus 1 to minus 1. And let's do a quick sketch again of the original function. Original cosine function. One, two, three, one, two, three. So the original cosine function looks like this. Zeros, lowest point in the middle, and zeros in between. So here's, here's uh, cos theta. But I'm moving it to the left, 60 degrees. So every point's going to go over two squares. One, two. 1, 2, 1, 2, and 1, 2. So here's my function. Just like that. Okay, so that's um, that's pretty much what's covered in 6.4. Might be a little bit more, but that's okay. We're going to be, uh, and like I said, go to my PB Wiki site. I'm going to um, upload the quiz that isn't normally there when I'm teaching. 
but you can download that and I will do the solutions to that in a few minutes and post it for you. Have a good day. Have fun doing your math. It is fun.